Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So hopefully you learned a ton in the first video. If you did, give it a like and a subscribe and leave some comments on it. Also follow me on Twitter below. Now we did a bunch of stuff in that video, but we're gonna continue on in here and utilize the functionality within this bank contract. So what didn't we do? Well, we didn't send value to this contract using the deposit function. So we need to make a transaction that we sign because in this, we're gonna take value out of our local wallet and we need to be able to sign that in order to send those funds out to a smart contract. Otherwise, it's not gonna send them. Now, we already learned how to sign transactions in the last video, but it's gonna be a little different. So in this one, we just created a transaction object and we added all the stuff in there that we need. But this time, we're not just blindly sending it to another address, we're calling a function on a smart contract that accepts the value and then does things with it. So we need to actually access that function when we send the value, not just create an object and send it to an address. Hopefully that makes sense. So here's what we're gonna do now. We are going to create a transaction object, but we're going to call that function. So we need to set up our first and second account again so we can utilize these variables. So let's say first account, let's just set up all those variables that we need and we'll need the private key just like last time. So I'm just gonna change these places where we were grabbing those values already and just make them into our variables. And that is why it's great to be able to grab these. So now that we have these, let's also create a variable for the second account's private key because we're gonna send value with our second account to our account on that bank. So we'll say second account and we'll call this underscore PRIV again equals, and what does this equal? It equals what is in our ganache here. So we're gonna go to the second account and we're gonna grab our private key so we can sign our transactions with it. Because like I said, if you're sending value out of your wallet, you need to sign a transaction or it's not gonna work. So now that we have those values, we can hop down and create a transaction. But like I said, it's gonna be a little different. We're no longer just simply creating this object like this and sending it. We need to call a function and create an object within that. So how do we do that? We're gonna make a variable here and we're gonna name it deposit ETH. And that is so that we can sign that when we're done. And we're gonna say target, which is our contract, dot functions, dot deposit. And deposit doesn't take any value, so this is empty, right? Deposit gets its value from the value field message dot value. So there's nothing actually in here. So we have to send that within the value. And we're going to say after this, instead of transact or instead of call, we're actually gonna use something else called build transaction. So you're gonna learn something new again here. And inside of here is where we create our object. So much like our object last time, we need announce, we need a from address, we need a value, which is what we're gonna send. We need the gas and we need the gas price. So instead of typing this all out, we can just grab it from the signed transaction we did in the previous video, and then we could just make the modifications. The key here is that we're just using this build transaction this time when we're calling this function, which it looks like I named wrong there, so that should fix that. And then we'll paste this in here like this. So first off, we need to get the nouns from the second account, not the first one, because that's what we're sending it from. So second account. And then instead of being two, we're not sending to the second account, we're sending from the second account to the smart contract. So we'll just change that to from. And let's just do two ether this time. And the rest of this should be good to go. But then next, the same as last time, we need to sign the transaction and then we'll pass that signed transaction and grab our transaction hash that we can print out. So let's do that next. I'm gonna paste in some code here, which is exactly the same as that. So let's see here, paste this in. So we got our signed deposit and we're gonna do that with ETH account signed transaction. We're gonna use the object that we created up here and we're gonna sign it with our second account's private key. All the same thing we did in that previous video. And then we're going to create a transaction hash 
by taking that signed deposit as a raw transaction and sending it over the blockchain. Now we have that signed transaction so we can view that transaction hash if we want. So let's do that. I'll paste that in here. Again, it's the same as the last time, right? We're gonna say web three dot two hex and we're just gonna print out that transaction hash. And then if we want, we could also view that. So that would be the same way that we did up here. Let me grab that. So it'd be this get transaction hash. So let's copy that and we'll paste it down here and we'll just name it transaction hash. All right, perfect. So now what should happen is we're gonna create this object. We are going to sign it, send it over, grab our transaction hash and then print out that transaction hash and then print out our actual transaction. And then how about after we get done with that? So we had a zero balance before. Let's verify our balance after we do the transaction hash. So let's print this out here. We'll just say target functions, get balance, call the same way that we did above. Nothing is different there. So let's do that. We just did a whole bunch of stuff in here. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna scroll this up, make it a little bigger. All right, uh, no attribute function. Did you mean functions? Where was this at? Attribute error line 29. Yes, I believe that has to be functions. So let's give that a try again. Okay, perfect. This all looks good. So here's what happened. We went back again, we printed out our variable in storage, and then we sent that transaction to change it, but it was already test. So now it's just test again. And then we grabbed our balance, which was zero, right? Once we grabbed our balance, we signed a transaction, we got the transaction hash, we printed out our transaction, and this should show a value right here of two ether, right? Two with 18 zeros after it, so that's correct. And then what we did is we printed out our new value from the contract with our get balance function. So that's all working. We now have a balance on our smart contract of two ether. So the only other function really to test out that we would have access to um, because we're not the owner would be our withdraw. So how do we withdraw out of this account? Well, withdraw is going to require us to sign a transaction but the difference with withdraw versus the deposit is now we have to do a build transaction transaction, but we also need to send a parameter when we do it. So how do we do that? Well, let's hop back in and set this up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste in some code, which will be easy to understand based on what we just did, and then I'll explain it. But there's not much new here, just adding a parameter. So here is what we did. So we said our variable is gonna be withdraw ETH. And again, we're gonna call our target contract with functions dot withdraw. Now, what are we gonna put in for our parameter? Well, we're gonna put in our one ether we're gonna take out, and then we're gonna put our 18 zeros after it. Or you could probably run like a web um, from way to way type functionality to handle that for you. But again, this time, we have to build a transaction again. And inside of our transaction, we're gonna have our announce. So we're gonna do web3.eth.getTransaction count on our second account again, same as above. And then we're gonna do it from our second account so that it knows what account is withdrawing because within this smart contract, right, it checks our message.sender, that's the person who's calling. So that's what it's gonna look for. And then we have our gas and we have our gas price. So that's all stuff you know how to do. The only difference between this and what's above is that we have to put that parameter in there in waveform, whichever way you wanna do that. Then we need to create our signed version of this by saying ETH account, sign transaction, same as above. And then we have to grab our transaction object that we named withdraw ETH right here, nothing different here. And then we have to put in our private key of user two. So we can easily do that and say, second account priv. 
So we'll say second account priv exactly as above. And then again, we're just gonna take that sign deposit as a raw transaction. We're gonna do a send raw transaction. And then I guess we can print all of this stuff out again and take a look at it. So let's grab this again here and we'll just copy paste it down here. So we got our transaction hash again and we're gonna send our transaction hash with get transaction to print it out. And then we will print out our get balance again, which this time should be around one ether. We should also see one ether being sent within our transaction. So let's do this. And I'll scroll this sucker up. Let's see what we got. So we have our initial two ether, and then we're sending a new deposit now of a value of two ether again, which gives us four ether in the account. And now we run our withdraw function. So here is the transaction hash for that. Now there won't be a value in it this time because we're not sending any value to the contract. We're pulling it out, which I believe should be within this input field if you decoded it but it leaves us with three ether because we had four in there and we took one out. You did a ton of stuff in this video and let me tell you, this one took a long time to put together because it was hard to find this information. Most of it was me just piecing things together, playing around and making it work so you're gonna learn from my pain. But to recap, what we did is we learned how to pull memory out of the smart contract, out of the storage blocks that you shouldn't have access to. We also learned how to send a transact this time instead of just a call with a variable. And then we learned how to create a new kind of transaction where we have to build that transaction using a function on the blockchain. Followed by, we learned how to do the withdraw, which we also had to build that transaction with the function, but then we had to send our value with it. And then we also learned how to do a call or do a call again, because we already did that in the chain link contract. But just to show you that all the stuff that we're doing is exactly the same you would do on the main net, because I always get people crying saying, oh, show us how to do it on the main net. It's exactly the same. You just set it up locally so that way you didn't have to spend a bunch of money while you were testing. Same thing, so don't cry about it. Instead, just give me a like, a comment, and a subscribe for hopefully teaching you a whole bunch of stuff here. I had fun. I learned a ton putting this stuff together. So now in the next video, we are going to probably drop into a deep dive and learn a little bit more about contract storage memory while it's still fresh in your brain. That way you get that extra understanding. And then we will take a look at um, how to subscribe to events because if you look in here, we have a emit of an event for when we're depositing. So how do we monitor that if we want to monitor contracts that have events in case maybe we're building a web page or we're monitoring something sensitive we found. So we'll show how to do that with some async IO programming. So that'll be fun. And then what else do we have? Oh yes, before the next video, I want you to look at this contract and just tell me what's fishy about it just from a perspective of functionality that really should not be in here and why. And we'll go over why that is and then do a quick demo about why it's bad. So I will catch you in the next video. Hopefully you learned a ton. I learned a ton making it. So have a great night.